Okay, we're on uh, chapter 13, Foundation Switching Operations. Uh, it's kind of a rehash of what we covered previously. Um, so switching functionality switches forward frames based on the, the destination MAC address. So whenever um, you know a frame comes out, you're going to have a, a source MAC where it's coming from, and you're going to have a, a, desti a destination MAC address. Um, so if a, it forwards something out, it's going to forward it out to, to everywhere and then add that to the, uh, the database. The, the switch initially builds its, its MAC address table, the, uh, the content addressable memory, or CAM tables it's called, um, based on the, the source MAC addresses. Um, an individual device sends out frames, the switch identifies the source MAC on each frame and what port it originates. And then after the switch stops receiving frames from a, a source MAC, it eventually, about five minutes usually, removes the entry from its, its CAM table unless it's a, a static MAC entry. Um, if a switch needs to forward a frame, it looks at the CAM table. If there's an entry for the destination MAC, it forwards to that specific port. Otherwise, it forwards to every port except for the port that the frame was originally received on. This is called flooding. And so you can... Um, you can kind of see exactly how that's that's working here. So, for instance, computer A, presuming this cam, cam table is completely uh, blank initially because it's it's not going to know where to send anything from the get go. Uh, computer A it needs to send something out. It sends a frame into uh, port F01 to the switch to go elsewhere. Uh, the switch analyzes that. It sees that the uh, the source. MAC address is that of computer A, the 0234.abc.ef56, and it associates that to port F01 because it knows that that MAC address is directly connected or somewhere connected to that port. Um, and the same thing happens for the other ports. Now port, uh, port 12 over here actually has a hub on it that has other devices or multiple devices connected on it. So you see that you've actually got um, two different MAC addresses associated with that particular port because both the uh, computers B and C are going to be able to ultimately forward frames over here and it's going to see a source MAC address uh, corresponding to both B and C after they traverse through the hub. So you know, eventually it, it's able to form a full table or a mostly form a full table of all of the various MAC addresses that are connected to it after they've uh, sent some kind of traffic through the switch. It's going to be able to identify where they're located at. Um, so there's three main t types of frame transmission methods, um, the, and we'll go over each of these individually, the, the store and forward method, the, uh, the cut through, and the fragment free. Now the, the store and forward method um, is uh, what is most commonly used today. The, the switch stores a receive frame in memory and runs a cyclic redundancy check, a CRC check, to see if there are any kind of errors with it. If the CRC fails, um, it indicates that the frame is corrupted, so it determines it's a bad frame and drops it. If the CRC test passes, the frame gets forwarded on to the, the destination MAC address. Um, this is the, the most common transmission method among Cisco switches. Um, in, 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 there's some other methods we'll talk about in a second, but they were previously limited by um, the hardware capabilities of the switches to to use this method because it took a little bit more time to run the, the CRC. Um, so some of the other methods we're going to talk about here in just a second um, used to be more common because of hardware limitations, but now that hardware limitations on switches are, are pretty nil, this is pretty much the, the common standard on any Cisco switch right now. So the, the other method, kind of the complete foil to the, the storm forward is the cut through. This method only looks at enough of the frame to identify the destination and then forward it out. Um, it performs no check on the frame, and even if it's a, a corrupted frame, it still gets forwarded. This was, uh, you know, as I said before, this was once an appealing method because of the low need of switch processor and memory resources, which were um, pretty um, rare, rare or expensive at the time um, to forward frames. But since those those uh, resources are no longer of such high value, you're able to get it on any switch. This is no longer used quite as um, frequently. And then kind of uh, an in-between to both of those is the, the fragment free. Um, what it does is it checks only the first 64 bytes of the frame uh, before forwarding because that's where most collisions occur. 
if it detects an error in those first 64 bytes, it'll drop the frame, but otherwise it forwards it on. Um, and it's considered a hybrid of the previously two mentioned uh, methods because of that. So um, when we're talking about larger switching networks, and this is, um, I, when I think of, of switching networks, multiple switches, you're not thinking of a single site location that's only got a handful of users. I'm, I'm usually uh, conceptualizing a, a larger network maybe on a college campus or something where you've got a lot of switches and so you're you're gonna have to interconnect those switches and a re result of connecting those switches is the the potential for switching loops um, there's a, a lot of methods that some different protocols are used to remediate this um, but this is what would happen if you didn't have it so switching loops and broadcast storms basically and a, a multi-switch network should often have redundant links which can cause switching loops if the destination MAC is unknown or is a broadcast or multicast frame is sent out all ports except the one it was received on um, and actually like if you if you look at the example here um, let's say that computer A is trying to send a, a frame out um, and it's it's actually meant to go to uh, computer B but it, it sends that frame out to computer A or to switch A um, switch A does not have a, a Mac uh, address listed for this so it's going to forward it out all ports except for the one it received it on which is the port A so it sends it out all ports which would be the one the links uh, going to uh, switches B and D inclusive so switches B and D each respectively receive that frame um, they consult their cam table they don't have a destination for it and um, they, they decide to forward it on as well, so it's going to go out all ports except the one it was received on. So the the frame on B is going to be forwarded out everyone except the link going back to A. It's going to end up at C. D is going to do the exact same thing. So once it arrives at C, it may not arrive at the exact same time, but you're basically going to have two frames meant for the same destination that are both, um, both meant to go to switch C. Switch C looks at its cam table, and it may or may not have a, um, a destination for B yet. Um, so it's going to forward it out all frame. It's going to forward out each of those um, individual frames out every port it wasn't received on. So the frame that came from B, it's going to be forwarded out all frames except for this link back to B. So it's going to go to D as well as to computer uh, B here, and then the link the the frame that came from D is going to uh, be forwarded out. All, uh, all ports except for the one going back to D. So you're gonna have a second frame, basically two of the, the same frame make it to B, and then another frame go out to B. So at that point you've got these two frames that are, are both going back backwards as well. So, and eventually like it, this, this ends up taking up all of the switching resources because you, you eventually get to where those frames are just going in a big circle here, never stopping, um, and, and eventually it causes what's known as a broadcast storm because you're you're seeing so many um, broadcasts to try to find the, the, destination, the destination MAC address. So to prevent those switching loops, um, they came up with a protocol known as Spanning Tree Protocol, uh, 802.1D, or STP. Um, STP can be used to avoid switching loops. It uh, determines which ports are allowed to forward and which should not uh, be forwarding or should be blocking. STP can also react to topology change if um, a link or switch goes down so that it knows how to get the, uh, the frames to the proper switch and ultimate endpoint in the network.